Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is the Commando Cast, a video cast about all things Star Wars Destiny. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership, including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! High stakes set three from the Renewed Hope Committee is shaping up to be quite the set so far. Week two spoiler review coming at you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Dice Commando. Thanks for thanks for joining me again. So man, what what a week with this. So we are gonna go right into the the week two spoilers um, with with a couple of notes. I uh, there's kind of generally a formula on how do you do these, and you know the easiest way to do them is just kind of go in chronological order of how they release. Um, normally that works. That's not what I want to do tonight. I actually want to hit on some of like because I'm super excited about some of the stuff that we've seen this week. Like this has been fantastic week for us, right? So let's just go ahead and right into that. And I want to make sure I give the shout outs first so I don't skip them over because I'll be going out of order. So Echo Base, they dropped three spoilers on Monday. Please go check out check out their article. They've got some really, really good stuff in there. Uh, we then, of course, had, had had my video, Aaron Chapman. Thank you, sir, for joining us. It's always great to get kind of a peek behind the curtain and the thought process behind stuff going on there. And then Friday night, the Destiny Junior guys on their stream they dropped a big old red hero bomb on us. Super awesome, Cara Dune. Loving it. So thank you guys. Um, please make, make sure, like I said, I just want to make sure credit's given where it's due in case I, I forget and I, I skip over it as, as we go. So where, where I want to start tonight is with Ahsoka, who, who was spoiled, spoiled by Aaron on, on this channel. So Ahsoka Tano, Searching the Galaxy. She is a 1417 blue hero character, no subtypes, with 12 health. She's using the Empire War die, which is really cool because you can recycle that. I know that die, we rolled it a lot of times in testing, but never really in a tournament. So it'll be cool to see it hit the table, and I think it will. So it's two melee, two melee, discard, shield, and a resource with, with that blank. But her PA is exhaust two weapons, attach this character to roll those weapons dice into your pool. Uh, I did see the question asked, actually, which is I wonder why you have to exhaust the weapons since you can only use a power action once per turn. Um, that's kind of interesting. Maybe we'll see. Um, I, I think that was a really smart observation. So maybe we'll see um, some stuff that lets you basically, you know, because there, there's stuff out there like Rebellion, what was it, Rebellion Leader or whatever it was, that the hero version of Admiral, or sorry, the hero version of Grand Moff kind of let you do that. But anyway, anyway, I just thought that was an interesting observation. So uh, the reason I wanted to start with her is I think there was some, I mean, relatively lukewarm uh, reception on Ahsoka. Like there was a lot of like super excitement out of the, out of the gate because let's be very clear, like Jarkai with her looks really, really freaking phenomenal, as well as her lightsabers, which which we'll kind of touch on at the end here. But um, I mean, her with a Jarkai build looks looks really, really, really good. And I think some of the lukewarm reception was like, man, she's in that seventeen slot. Like that's a little high. I don't know if we're going to be able to find a partner with her. And of course, obviously, we haven't seen the rest of the set yet. And, and I, I think that um, I think that chatter and that line of thought is completely fair. Uh, and and I, I'll admit that I was kind of in that line, too. I was like, oh, I think she's going to be hard to find a partner with. Um, however, or not really however, and, and, and again, like I, I grant that. But I, I think with, with this card I'm showing now, I, I think it's pretty clear why she's at 17, or at least to me, I think it's pretty clear. So... This is Cara Dune's Blaster. This is a uh, two-drop red hero weapon upgrade. It has, interestingly enough, it was pointed out, this is uh, Luke's, the same as Luke Skywalker's uh, X-Wing style, but it is one range, two range, two range for one, plus two, a shield and a blank. Attached characters, weapon dice showing blanks may be resolved as melee damage with a value of one. If this updates on Cara Dune, it gains redeploy. Right, so, so right out of the gate, this is really scary with a Jarkai build, right? Because Jarkai gives you the plus one on your weapons and lets you carry extra weapons. 
And this one means that those weapons can resolve their blanks as may one melee, which then would get the buff from Jarkai, right? So now, what does Ahsoka being 17 have to do with all that? Fair question. But my point here is that if you're running this with like Cara Dune, for example, who we'll look at in a second, that would be a really, really scary combination with Ahsoka at 16, right? Because Ahsoka being able to just roll two more dice in that are guaranteed to not hit blanks, right? That you're guaranteed to get value out of them is, is a really, really scary prospect. And to be clear, it doesn't stop, right? Ahsoka being at 29 doesn't stop her, right? I'm not saying she is, but if she, even if Ahsoka was at 29, it doesn't stop her from playing this card. It doesn't. Um, but there, there's a lot of other interactions there that I think that I think that having Ahsoka at that 17, seeing some of the stuff we've seen in this was was probably the right play, right? So I think this is one of those cases where certainly I'm putting my trust in in the designers and the testers to have figured out that, yes, with the other stuff that we have, 17, 17 makes sense, right? So I, I thought this was a just, like I said, I wanted to cover this one second because I thought it was a really good example kind of speaking to like, you know, if Ahsoka was considered to be that bubble character, why they shot higher. And I think, I think that's a really cool, really cool move there. All right, so boom. I am so freaking excited about this card. Like this card is awesome, right? And I'll, you know, again, I'm not all the way through Mando yet. I've actually got a couple episodes under my belt now. Um, we have, we have met her, but um, I know enough to know that Cara Dune's Blaster is not actually Cara Dune's Blaster because she took it from the Mando. But um, point is here, she's freaking phenomenal just as a build card, right? So Cara Dune, 11, 14, 11, 14, baby. It's a pretty sweet spot. So 11, 14, red character, trooper, 11 health, one melee, two melee, two melee, shield, resource, and a blank. If this character has a weapon on it, you may resolve her damage side is ranged. Pretty sweet. PA, resolve this character's character dice showing damage and either increases the value by one if it's against a villain character, meaning as if you're resolving it against a villain character, or give a character one shield if it is against a hero character, meaning if you're resolving it against a hero character. Right? That one, that one's pretty neat, right? You get one more extra value out of one die at the cost of a little bit of slowness and maybe not being able to use modifiers, like if you've got her blaster on or overkill or overkill's ability doesn't necessarily help you here, but you, but you know, you, you, you see the line of play there. So I think that one's neat, but what, what she's really bringing to the table here is her points. I mean, she's, she's freaking phenomenal at a 14. She's got all sorts of pairings, right? Where, where my head went immediately first out of the gate was, was Leia, Redemption Leia, for some shield, maybe Jarkai Mel too. I mean, I you know I, I have again. I'm a little blind. I'll, I'll completely acquiesce that I'm a little blinders on right now with Jarkai with everything going on. Um, but you've got the you've got the Leia weapons build potentially there. And re, again, re, remember, like anything you put on Kara, you're going to be able to, you know, if you have a Killian that goes on her and you need a, a base for your plus three, Kara's got it. If you throw Kara's blaster on there and you need a base for the plus two. Kira's got it. Um, yeah, just a lot of neat stuff there. Uh, and then the other place you go is, is Benthic, or at least that's that's where my next thought was. Um, so basically, you're putting him with two of the real heavy hitter 16s from from Redemption. Again, they, those were just the easy places I went. There's a lot of other 16s out there. Uh, you can also, interestingly, you can play her with two eights, right? So you could play her with Rebel Sniper and somebody else. You can play her with uh, two Nubu Guards. Actually, I, I threw that one out uh, the other day in the DC Discord um, because then you could play Medic, right? Which is that card from Faltering Allegiances, I think, where you can spot uh, X number of reds to heal that many. So like healing three doesn't seem to suck. Plus you get Field Medic and all the other all the other red jazz, right? So, um, wow, this card... <laughs> This card's freaking awesome. So this card is really exciting from a build standpoint. Um, I'm almost certain. Well, there's a lot of the set to see, but I'm almost certain this is going to be one of my one of my favorite cards, right? Because you guys know, you guys know I love Tarful, right? And this is right up the Tarful alley. It serves that spot. I was playing the snot out of Tarful with all sorts of blue pairings at the end of covert missions, and. Um, I mean, I sorry, Tarful. I, I have a, I have a new I have a new red fourteen point love. Sorry, buddy. Rrr, rrr. Pound one. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go into where. So that that was the that was the excitement. I'll go ahead and just go into the the echo base spoilers. Um, there's some really cool stuff in here. I will admit, going in, um, I haven't spent too much mental energy trying to figure out where these fit. There, like I said, I I really recommend you go and you check out their article. Again, I'll throw the link in the description. Uh, they did a really good job throwing out a bunch of stuff. So. 
They open up with IG-11, programmable hunter. He's a 1013 yellow villain character bounty hunter droid with 10 health. He has one gun, two gun, plus two gun, a disrupt, a, blank, or a resource, and a blank. You may include IG-11 on a team that also includes a hero engineer. Okay. So uh, just right out of the gate, by the way, you can you can play him with a four dice start with IG-88, uh, which is kind of neat because it's basically the same size. Like IG-88's uh, two, two, three for one. This is a one, two, plus two. Uh, they both have a disrupt. I think IG has two disrupt. Or no, they're both IG. I think IG-88 has two disrupt and a money. And this guy has one on money. So they're very similar there. I think that's a really cool design slot. I mean, I don't know that the IG-11 pairing is like... So they're the, <laughs> I don't know that the IG-IG pairing is necessarily like the, the end all, right? Especially because you can't like play a plot with the bounty hunters. But it's cool. Uh, so the the next thing where... Well, let's go ahead and go to ooh, Quill, I think. Cool. Uh, so Quill, free of servitude. He's an 810 yellow hero engineer with 9 health. Focus, focus, shield, resource, two for one resource, and a blank. And a PA, remove this die to add or remove one token from a support or upgrade. Right, so so right out of the gate on the PA, you're like, oh man, with Whistling Birds, that seems like pretty good, right? Because you can play him at eight with a three die Mando and start Whistling Birds and pew, 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 right? So there, there's one of our eight options. But but going back with IG-11, with, with him being the engineer, I, I am, I'll, I'll admit that I'm struggling a little bit to see like the straight line of team comp there because at 10, 13 and then 8, 10, like maybe, maybe there's some sort of interesting plot out there or, or something like that. Now, um, we do have the minus one plot for all yellow characters. So like maybe, maybe that's something out there. Cause then you could run, um, it'd be 23. And then if you have an eight, you could figure out some sort of, uh, but it'd have to be all, all yellow. Right. So um, that's an obvious, yeah, again, we'll, we'll have to see how that, how that fits out. Um, but I'm going to really have to sit back on that one, I think, until we see more from the set. But like I said, I, I openly admit that I haven't really put a lot of mental energy into, into these guys because I've been so freaking excited about Ahsoka and then Kara. So yeah, sorry. Um, that said, this card right here, I'm into this card, right? So you guys may recall in the Wayback Machine, in Redemption Spoilers, Dr. Afro was spoiled. And I was like, oh my God, Dr. Afro is hashtag amazeballs, blah, 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 blah. Whole episode about how I thought Afro was fantastic. Okay, again, put that, put another notch on my Andrew was wrong, bad, bed post, right? Except I, I don't actually think I was wrong. I just think she didn't find a spot, right? I still think Afro is really good. Um, and I think this card might might really help, right? So this is a yellow villain event for zero, self-destruct. Either discard one of your droid supports or defeat one of your droid characters to deal three indirect to an opponent. Now, I probably don't want to defeat my droid character. I mean, maybe that fringe case is there. But more than likely, what I want to do is use Afra to drop a Viper probe droid, hit you for one indirect, and then self-destruct it, throw that probe droid at you, and blow it up. Because remember, your Viper probe droids... Not only are they zero, but you can only use them if you spot a red character. So if they take out your red character, at least I can turn my Viper probe droids into floating thermal detonators, right? That seems pretty fresh. It would be uh, not thermal detonators in that case. It would be improvised explosives. But still, I, I really like this card. Um, definitely going to try it with Afra. I mean, that's really all I can think of right now um, out of the gate. But I, I think this one is... I think this one's pretty pretty worth playing, right? Because like even if it's early and I draw a Viper probe droid, I'm still gonna throw this at throw it at you even early, right? Just to get it out of my hand. So yeah, I like this one. All right, so going back to like I said, it's kind of a bit out of order, and this this is why you go in order. But like I said, I wanted to come out of the gate swinging. So Ahsoka Tano's lightsaber. This is a two drop hero blue weapon. One melee, two melee, plus two melee shield and a blank shield resource in the blank uh, while it's on ahsoka it's it's non-unique if attached character has exactly two weapon upgrades on it increase the value of the style by one right so with it's it's kind of funny right because and again we talked about this with aaron but uh you can have basically two of the, the ideas you can have two of these and then like a valor which is really amazing or something else like an ability on on ahsoka and then they, and then they get the bonus or if you go the jar, jar kai route you're going to end up with more than two, so you'll lose the bonus from this. So 
maybe this isn't necessarily what you play in the Jarakai build. I mean, it's still a really decent weapon. Um, but, you know, at this point, there's probably other better things out there for, like, the Jarakai build. Um, but again, if you just need to overload weapons, you can go with it. But, um, yeah, and, and I think that's why, like, I think this is cool. I think it's hits, I think it hits design flavor on, like, all cylinders. I just think that probably, I don't know, I really struggle not to see Ahsoka with, like, a Jarakai build. Um, but, but maybe not. But, but maybe not. It's just, I think it's really hard. Like, if you're trying to play to get these two on her, I think it's really hard to get both of them on her because you want to get her loaded up early, right? So you can get them in. So I think, I think probably functionally this one gets played for other stuff. But keep in mind, we do have rotation coming at some point. So that, that, that position certainly, certainly may change. Uh, we then have Kyber Quest. Exhaust one of your elite blues to play a blue upgrade with cost of three or less. It's a neutral event for zero, uh, but it is certainly not without cost, right? So I think this one's really going to depend a lot on basically how bad, I think this one basically is a how well can you abuse the Jedi Padawan, right? Or the Jedi Apprentice. I always get that confused. But the 7-9 the blue character who's elite, and then his weapons, his weapons have, have redeploy on him, right? So... I think that's basically what this one comes down to. There are certainly some, because it's a blue upgrade, so it doesn't have to be a weapon, right? So there are certainly some, but it, but it's cost three or less. So there are certainly some situations in which you, you might want to just out of the gate drop, you know, a three draw or a three cost ability on somebody. Um, but I think probably, I think probably if you don't get this one round one, generally you're probably not going to use it unless you do have somebody who's fodder like the, like the apprentice so this this one is um now again aaron mentioned specifically that he this was basically his homage to to the card destiny right which was i believe a spark of or a, i believe it was a spirit of rebellion card i think um I'll put it up of course so i i mean I, I think this card fills its niche but i think it's again it's one of those things where you have to really get it early but you can make the same argument for binds right so so fair enough all right, and then last card we have is Pitch In. This came out with the Destiny Junior spoiler, so this is a one-cost event hero red. Spot up to three red upgrades to gain that many resources. Um, more, of a, more of a late game card in this case. Uh, I do have to question... I do have to question how valuable it is because, you know, we've seen, I think, a lot in the current meta, at least, at least in the current meta... That you tend to have a lot of re like resources don't tend to be a problem after like round three, right? For the most part, I mean resources are always something you have to manage. I get it, but like with the with the way that people are running like merchants and stuff like that, I don't think you're generally hurting for money after like round three, which is probably when this is, is really valuable. So, and again, it's hero, so you can't necessarily use this for like a blizzard or something like that, right? That would be maybe the other spot. But then again, if you're playing blizzard, you're probably not paying upgrades. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how useful this one is because it's another one of those where like you don't want to see it early. So then like if you're playing like, you know, generally if you're playing cards you don't want to see early, then they probably shouldn't be in your deck. Um, I don't know. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you always have cards you'd rather see earlier game and rather see later game. But if you clog your deck up with too many cards, right? Because what you're trying to do here is basically get two late game cards, right? Because what you're trying to do is make money to play something else that you want late game is what I'm saying here, right? So uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about this one, but, but again, there's, there's a lot more, lot more set to see. So anyway, yeah, that is, uh, that is it today, folks. Uh, week two rundown, just the nine cards. Um, there are some other cards that came out literally about 15, 20 minutes before I sat down to shoot this. Those are those are week three. Those are week three. So we'll be we'll be touching on those in a week. But make sure you to go check those out uh, as well. So again, thanks guys for for popping in. A uh, huge thank you to to Aaron and and his guys and everybody involved in playtesting over there. This is uh, really shaping up to be something awesome. And um, yeah, we're very 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 excited. So thanks guys. Thanks for watching and go commando.